Hi, sorry I'm late, I had to sort something out, but we are here. Hello everyone, how are we doing? <laughs> Evan, hello the puppet, hi Evan again. Chris, hello. Alex, welcome in, hi, 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 Kiani. How are we all doing? Hope we're all good. We're gonna be back with some killer frequency. Having them. I didn't do this uh, the other day. But I haven't streamed just because I felt ill the other day. And I was just taking some time yesterday just to catch up on things. But yeah, here I am. <laughs> the puppet welcoming to the vertical. How we all doing? Hope we're all having a good day. Right, let's get back into... Continue. Do we just continue from where we left off? Not getting daily dally. Wait, why'd I change things? Oh god. Why am I back in my chatty? I want gaming. There we go. <laughs> oh, dead, dead. Jesus. Pressing all sorts of buttons. But alright, let's get into this. So, we unfortunately killed Maurice and that guy at the maze. Because I am bad at the game. So, yeah. Make sure it's like both streams. Yeah. Oh god. There we go. Let's see. That's that. Is the game bugged or something? Why is it not loading? It's not loading. I need to close it down. Give me a second. Just need to open the game back up again. For some reason it wasn't loading. Going back to normal now. That's fine. <laughs> Vertical streams are not for everyone. Alright, let's get back to it. Oh god, the glasses are falling from my face. Alright, hopefully we can get into this now. <laughs> What's up guys, I thought I'd bring you outside. What the, what the, why do I want ads on that? No. <laughs> Trying to check my stream. <laughs> Alright, is this game frozen or something? Hello. Is this game bugged? I was gonna say, like, this game is very slow to load, or is it just my PC? I might need a new PC these days. This one's a. Uh... This one is a. Uh... Kind of had its day, I think. I mean, it's only four years old. But how long do PCs usually last? Like five, six years? I guess I got another couple of years out of them. They aren't for me. I'm a horizontal kind of girl. That's fine. You get more of the experience. There we go. Oh, God. Poor kid. All okay. right. Yeah, we I mean, you begin. Have been out, but still. What makes someone do that to a kid? By the way, why do you Probably think Molly you. missed their date? Do you think she's okay? Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. If anyone has any hints or stuff to help me not kill off any more people, that would be great. <laughs> Thank you for calling in, Mr. Walton. We'll All right, we're sure back with here. Town librarian so we've killed a bunch of people. I killed two so <laughs> I killed um, Remember, Eugene, the guy in the maze, and Maurice, the one in the. Uh, Next caller is up for us, so take it away. One in the uh, things. Uh, new caller. Caller, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16. Don't need this one. Hey, wonderful show tonight, Forrest. She killed everyone. <laughs> Thank you. That's really wonderful of you to say. What's your name, Connor? I didn't kill everyone. I saved some people. <laughs> Could you Go play on. my tune, Forrest? Your tune. Sure. Long ride home. 
That old song. Sure. Long you ride it. home. I think Which I played it the other that? day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. All right, mm. folks. Coming up is that old classic. Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're gonna find that song. What do you mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but uh, we don't have it anymore. What are you talking about? I threw it away. You threw it in the trash? No, I... I threw it out the window earlier today. Weird. Oh god, let me just put this back on, I guess. Why? Uh, and <laughs> yeah, why? why did you throw it out the window earlier today? Brad was annoying me oh, all really afternoon. Really well, well, thank you. He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. So I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. Oh god, am I have to get Oga outside? But I can only take so much. What do we do then? All right. So, uh, what do we do instead then? Let's just play a different song. We've got more important things to think about anyway. Gotcha. Okay, folks. Here comes some unrequested music. Sorry about that, Don. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. What? Well, no. Of all the songs to request, why did it have to be that one? Gee, Peggy, I don't know. What did the barn finds ever do to you? So I wrote that song Hello. for one. Hello. enjoy your evening. It gets real okay. old Thank when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. <gasps> why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. All right, call the camera in. Sorry Let's to go. cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. Forrest Nash. <laughs> Murphy! Oh, thank God. Shadow Bros, welcome in, Phil. Welcome in, friend. What's wrong? Talk to me, Murphy. What's wrong? Master Robbie? I warned you not to. Hindsight is 2020, okay? Forrest, we need to do something. God yeah. Damn, you came for the gallows waste disposal plan. Gallows waste disposal? Is this who? Carrying me inside and locked me in a dumpster. Gallows. I got a flashlight. So he's here. Oh, God damn. I smell smoke. I think he started a fire. Hold on, Murphy. We'll oh. call for help right now. You gotta hurry, man. Oh. I need someone here now, or I'm gonna die. Well, okay, okay, okay. Peggy, get the fire department on the line. On it. All right. Oh, do I have quick time events? Come on, pick up. Hi. Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? Oh no. He Oh god damn it! Forrest, oh, that no. evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. They can't only do fire anything. engine? But I have a few friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. And Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho on the east end of Myers Lane. But he's old. Really old. Okay, mm. I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. Uh, wait, so where did they say? I don't know where she said. Um... I see. She, I know she said one of them was old. Um, All right, Forrest. Who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Let's give you an answer. Yes, please. <laughs> I don't want to kill another person. <laughs> Is it Catherine? Alex? Is it Catherine? Alex Jericho? Should we call Murphy again? <laughs> who do we do? Okay. 
Catherine. Okay, cool. Thank you. Call Catherine. All right, give me a second. Mohammed, welcome in. I'm getting cool. They're on the way. They'll call hey. from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. <sighs> nice. All right. Call coming in. It's Catherine. She and Murphy are now both on the line. Hello, Catherine. Are you there? What, uh, what, what's happening at the plant? The whole damn thing is up in smoke. I... God damn it. I'm going in. Bruce, is there any seconds I'll just go for it? No worries, oh, please. Uh, where did he say? Waste disposal. Go to waste disposal. Yeah, it was waste disposal. That's where Stop. Murphy was. Okay, I'm here. I... Oh, forest. It's coming down. I gotta go. Oh. Forest. His father died a hero. What's just trying to protect the town? That's Wasn't he in waste disposal? Pretty nice, Forrest. Murphy, I promise I... we will stop this. For you and for Fernando. Okay, hey. I did a bad thing already. It's gonna be all... Forrest, we have another caller. Let's not waste time. No, let's not. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Forrest, Teddy Gallows Jr. here. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Creek neighbors during this awful time. Oh, mm -hmm. it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. We need cops who have the tools and funding they need to keep us safe. Okay, Teddy. We... I know. You're an outsider to our little town here, Forrest. But you're really stepping up the bat for us all tonight. I just I'm want trying, to say thank like... you for taking a swing for Gallows Creek. Jackass. Alright. Thanks, Teddy. Uh, Alright. Thanks, Teddy. Now, are you... Teddy, you lowlife. This is not the time to promote your damn campaign. I just want to make sure our town oh, is safe and he's prosperous. He's trying to, try to promote That's something. That's why the Gallows Family Factory, founded by my father, Theodore C. Gallows, God rest his soul, I said, wait here. employs over 200. Teddy, unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. You know what? I do have a problem a problem that's ruining our town you know what it is mm. yeah how about the goddamn serial killer the problem is that woman our current mayor linda cartwright oh he doesn't like the man she just isn't one of us linda cartwright is un-american Unstable and you're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town, it your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when I take office. The moral decay of All right. and see ya. that's enough of Teddy mm -hmm. Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. 
I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us. I need a minute. We'll be right back after these messages. Nothing. Ready to unlock your inner warrior for only twenty four ninety nine. Then step into Master Robbie's deadly dojo of Kung Rate and receive direct by video warrior instruction from me, Master Robbie. You will learn the four qualities of an ultimate conqueror. The power of the alligator, the discipline yeah, of the tarantula, <laughs> the speed of the tuna, the poise of the scorpion, and the wisdom of the bullfrog. Using classified techniques, I'll unlock your inner chi after only five 30-minute video sessions. Ultimate power and wisdom can be yours now for the low, low price of only $24.99. Just call 555 usa to take your first step to Good becoming deal. a champion. I guess. Never forget the element of surprise. If you buy today, you'll uh, receive two stop with additional the VHS tapes, the tornado technique, yeah, and karate love making. Oh, lovely. Okay. Alright. That's enough for you, dude. Yeah, pig. What more have I got to do? Hey, talk to Peggy? Or do I just gotta wait? Yes, I, I just gotta wait. Okay, we don't want that one played. We just went to wait. I, I don't know what's happening. Teddy Gallows Jr. is a family man, a devout Christian. Nope. <laughs> we don't want to play that while she's. Uh... <laughs> well, she's having a moment, you know. The world famous annual Gallows Creek Harvest Festival mm. is back! We got it all out on Giblet Field. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant. I know what to do now. I'm just dog, waiting. Cornhole, Corn on the Cob, Crokinole, Country Music, Can Jam, Jams, Jellies, Jamborees, Juggling, Roller Rickies, Roller Disco Lessons, Train. We got baby crawling, balloon popping, balloons for sale, beard contest, horse shoes, hayride, the game or something? Hey, you there. Well, we meant to wait this long. Ponies, apple bobbing, firearms, fire. Sand licking, cracker cramming, and cat shop. And bait tattoo, face painting, puppets, petting zoo, amazing maze maze, square dancing, story swapping, spelling bee, quilting bee, and sewing circle, pie eating, lawnmower racing, hot dog eating contest, flower contest, and of course our famous gourd measure off. The festival is brought to you by Mayor Linda Cartwright, sponsored by Gallows and Sons Factory and dedicated to the memory of Garrett Miley. Tragically taken from us last best. Mm. Caller on line one. I'm ready. Hello, Caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <sighs> oh, seems like we're going seriously. Uh, hello, Caller. Who is this? I need the police. I'm Forrest Nash. I. <clears throat> I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? <laughs> First man. He's hunting me and my friend. I, I think he's killed some of them already. Ooh. That's him. He's just outside. I can see him from up here. God damn it. She's just a kid. Yeah. Where are you? Where are you? 
Are, are you somewhere safe? Oh my god, oh my god. You'll stay with me, kid. Focus. I, I can't do this. You yes, can. You can. Focus. Tell me, what's your name? Uh oh. Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? Carrie. Carrie. Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there. All right? Now, where are you? No matter. Did you save him? I didn't. I thought I did the right thing. Uh, what? What do I do? Right. What do I do? What do I do? I do not want to get this person killed. So she's in a murder house, and she needs somewhere to hide. Just let me. Let me know what you think. Where do I save Carrie? How do I save her? Well, I did bad. Yeah. <laughs> where where do I put Carrie? Where, where do I put her? No, what? I didn't know what I was doing. I thought I was doing the right thing. Where do I tell Carrie to hide? I do not want to get this wrong. I can't get this wrong. I'm killing too many people. I'm not a good radio host. I need to walk myself. No, okay. Um, but what do I do with these? What do I do? She said she's in old mode. Well, not assisted up another character. Um. I'm trying to look for anything on here. I doubt it's gonna give me an edge. I don't know, I'm just Go gonna close it. Okay, I'll... I've done the wrong thing, haven't I? Don't move! Oh, should you see a bun? Oh god, no. Just stay quiet. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no. Oh no. Oh, was it a prank? God damn what? it. What? What? Are you... Are you kidding me? Okay, it was a prank. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> oh, who's on the phone, Carrie? The cops? No. <laughs> Just a joke, jeez. Wait, isn't that... Jimmy, that wasn't funny, you sicko! Of course I called the cops, but, but some guy just answered instead. What guy? Horace Nash, what the hell are you all doing? It's prank night, old man. We're just having fun. That's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's oh, it. I'm got out. Got him. <laughs> Go home, Jimmy. Jimmy. Everyone, it's really not safe to be out. Please. Go home. And waste whistling night? <laughs> no way. That little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in... <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Oh no, is that, that the real killer? Seth? Seth is right next to you. That's oh a... no, the real killer's with uh, them in the crowd. Wait. Oh no. Who, uh, who are you? 
Time, but not much. Forrest, we have to. Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend. We drove out to the old murder house. What old murder house? Of course. The van. Who's got the keys? Jimmy had them. Why is this on the floor? Oh, the maze maze thing. Uh, okay. okay, okay. It's gonna be okay, Carrie. Right. Stay calm. We'll figure calm. something out. Between all of you, there's gotta be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? Heather, shut up. If we do that, we're gonna get Oh yeah. <laughs> if only Jeannie were here. Jeannie? I was like, hello, I'm the Jeannie McPherson? The step Our intern Jeannie? Yes. She's my best so friend. The smartest back. one out of all of us. She stayed in tonight. Force, listen. We'll see what we can come up with. And, uh... What? Scott, you're not any good at... And... No, no, Chad. Out of all of us... You're not the one to I'm trying to quiz downstairs. Oh. Everything okay? Quiz? No. We, uh, I don't think I've got uh, that part. I'm we're not figuring sure out yet. a plan. But everyone's volunteering to do things they're just bad at. I think we can figure out what to do. But I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to be the tiebreaker. Oh, or else no. these idiots are going to get us killed. But I... Shut up, you... Oh. Forrest, I'll call you back. But I don't know anything about your friends. Uh. Well, <laughs> these damn kids never learn. Nope. Breathe, Peggy. It's okay. Says, says, like, uh, this puzzle. They do this kind of thing every Ooh. year, Forrest. People Can I leave? Hurt. All right, <clears throat> folks. We're gonna work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. Maybe we can go downstairs. This next one goes out to all the trap kids out there. <laughs> oh, funny, Forrest. Peggy. You mentioned something about their friend working here? Oh, we can go downstairs in a minute. Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not sure why we took on an intern. We really didn't have the office space for one. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere downstairs, I heard. All right, I'll go see if I can find her desk. Hopefully she has something we can use. Mm-hmm. All right, let's head back down and find that puzzle. Have I think I know... Her desk is downstairs. Yeah, I know where it is. Mouse chest? They really tucked Jeannie away. Can I pick this up? They just gave her a box and a pillow. Attention staff, please put some of your furniture. Notice. Who is in the desk absolutely opposite of the door? Friendship ah. quiz. This might work. The freak. Friendship group. Okay, we got it. Most likely it's a peak at Mount Everest. So Heather's gonna win at that. So like, durability maybe. Most likely to win award for the worst poker face. Alright. Hey, you find anything that'll help us out? Yeah, I found a friendship quiz with all these kids on it. If you think that'll help, then good enough. Carrie's on line one. Whenever you're ready. All right, let's go for it. This is Forrest Nash, back again with an unlucky caller on this. Callers, welcome in. Carrie, are you there? Yes, we've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. I'm ready. What's the first step? Okay, first things first. We'll need a spotter, someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna um... be a hard climb. 
We're deciding most to slightly to peak. Kyle and hot David. Uh, Heather. So most likely to peak of us so a climb. So Heather. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather. He picked you. Now please stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. <laughs> Part two. The whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone most to. Likely to most likely to end up with and most likely to escape prison. Jennifer seems like that one. She's a Jennifer. Jennifer. <sighs> Jesus, Jennifer, you carry a bump key? Why didn't you say so earlier? Oh yeah. Anyway, that brings us to part three: getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. Oh okay. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so it'll probably be easier that way. That is part four. Okay. Kind of impressive. Is a very detailed plan. I'm I'm impressed. Yeah, yeah. It's weirdly easier to think when you're about to die. You're doing great. What's mm. the next part? Part four. We need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this uh, one, we're trying to decide between. Oh, hot David. It's gonna be hot David. Hot David. Cynthia and Scott. Hot David. Hot David. Hot David. It's an Olympic <laughs> athlete. Yeah, yeah. you are. Uh, Alright, I think. Uh, you got this, hot David. Hot David. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, let's recap. We get the eyes on the roof. A runner yep. distracts the killer while we grab the van keys and pick the lock on the gate. Now the trick. This has a back. Oh. Ooh. How do What's we? What's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling. But he thinks we're just a bunch of stupid teens. How do I look at the bat? So, Part five, we tricked the killer into a trap. So oh. pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable beat? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy, and Who the Foxy? Hi. Wait, is there a back? How do I look at the back of the quiz? Can I look at the back of the quiz? How do I? How do I look at the back of the quiz? Remember, I have a, I don't know, I just um, well, that's not gonna be good. Um, okay. Um, oh god, I got all these things on my desk. Uh, well, a poker face. Oh well. Please turn over. Oh god, I don't know how to turn it over though. Or is this the wrong thing? I'm gonna say Cynthia for this? I don't know though. How do I turn you over? How do I look at the back of this? Let me check the controls. Controls. Uh, okay, rotate object. But I'm trying to rotate it. Open, rotate. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm trying to rotate it, but Tell me to make it to past streams, you're fine. How do I look at the back? How do These controls are not very well thought out. I hold it. Let me go controls. Like Drop object, throw object, inspect object, E. Ah, maybe that. E? Ah, there we go. Can I? Ah, part two. Most likely to end crash, most likely to trip while running in a horror movie. Is your game mode? Right? I don't know. Most likely to beat go karting, most likely to win an Oscar. Tammy or Lisa? Who's. Well, oh, no, I thought you were going to ask her. Uh, maybe Lisa or Tammy? Lisa. Uh, well, well, right. Finally, yeah. Customers is perfect practice. That should take care of the killer. And then it's time to get out of here. Finally, part six. Oh, and then it's time to get out of here. Finally, part six. We need someone who can drive us through the woods and back to Gallows Creek alive. Who's our getaway driver? Should it be. Who have we got? Uh, Scott. 
Scott? Cynthia? Oh, whatever. Forrest, you know what to do. Would it be Scott? Most likely to... Uh, most likely to beat everyone at go cutting. Most likely to pass the... Um... Wait, did we have... Okay, fish, one of the little fiddle, Most likely to trip while running, most likely to end up in a car crash. So, either Tammy or Jennifer. So, did we do Cynthia before though? I think you already. Oh, but no. Oh, what? Oh, fudge. What did I mess up on? Uh, well, we don't want a car crash, so to Chad. Chad. Oh, perfect. Your go karting experience will be great, Chad. Thanks. I mean, <laughs> take a few seconds for ourselves. Lisa. It's go time. Sounds good. Talk to you in a sec. I didn't good say luck, was that Lisa. I didn't. I choose her. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. Didn't I choose her? I hope you're right. Yeah, let's hope. I felt. Oh, okay, maybe not. Uh -huh. Damn it. Well, let's just put some music on. Oh, the kids are back already. Line one again. All the rules. Yeah. If you're wait, just did you? I think in, I did. I can't. Oh god. Everybody's gonna have to wait and find out if I did the right man. thing. Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go. This on this time. All right. Good luck. Good luck. And Godspeed. Godspeed. Got this. <laughs> Here we go, everyone. Smarter. To the roof. Go, Heather. She's off and away. All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter's signal. Spotter says go. All right, we got someone running. So he says, oh no, I don't, don't think I picked Scout. Go. I'll get the keys on, we got a lock picker. All right. <gasps> oh, Jimmy. Oh, oh no, oh, poor Jimmy. His face is... The keys, Carrie, you need to get the van keys. His face is lying next to him, Forrest. We got God. Oh, no. Oh, God. Focus. We gotta focus. Focus. Breathe. Grab Breathe. the keys. Right. Grab the keys. The That's all you need. The keys. Just don't worry about it. You're thinking about your own life right now. Got him. It's up. Jennifer got the gate unlocked. All right. And hot David should be back any second. Oh, perfect. Okay. It's working. it's working. You're doing great. Focus. You got this. We got this. Next step. Okay. Stop the killer. All right. Wait. Get into position. Everybody oh god. Else. Okay. We still need to make it through this. All right. They're hiding. That's okay. Okay. Why should we made it do this? Go with it. Now. I think we did. Let me. Let me... Oh, there he is. I don't think I put it's it quiet. in the description. Yeah, let me... Now! Push the bookshelf over! Uh, can't find the oh link. God. He went through the floor! Spotter! You need to climb down now! We gotta go! Okay. Hang on, let me get a. Uh... Yes! Heather! I think we got it! Quick, everyone to the van! Driver, take the keys! Oh! No, I haven't put it in. Oh, my bad. I forget to do that. Oh no. 
Oh no. Was that? It's a whistling man. Drive now. Oh god, is she gonna get hurt? I'm not celebrating until everyone's out. Thank you, welcome back in. Thank God you're okay. Can you get somewhere safe? <gasps> Tea. Oh, shit. <laughs> I can make it home. Thank you both for helping. She's alive. <laughs> it was your plan, Carrie, and it was a great plan. Yeah, you did a good job. It was all it you. It was really all you, Carrie. Still, I need to get home. I... Hey, you Free, did it. Carrie. You're okay now. Sorry about okay, Jimmy. Somewhere safe. Talk to you then. <sighs> oh. Folks, that was a... That was a lot. Our thoughts go out to Jimmy's parents in this awful time. For any kids listening in, please stay inside and stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song oh, yeah. for the girl walking home in the dark. Oh god, we get a thing. I don't know what I'll show you. I was trying to clear up my desk. It's not so stupid. Hey, we had a call come in. All oh, teams except James survived. Yeah. Oh. Right, uh, I might crouch. Oh, there we go. There we go. Or is Nash here? Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189.16, The Scream. The Scream. <laughs> What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest. I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallows Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink. Trying to get everything ready for the harvest festival tomorrow. Mallow I had a guy from Starling Security here earlier installing the Starling 4000 system. So I'm Is there a roller rink? As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky. And I now consider you a friend, my man. Is there a roller rink here? Because I, I want to know if I have to. Do I will know beforehand. I have to freaking direct them somewhere if they freaking just do them. I freaking drop these, these are annoying just on there. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> All of it keeps my favorite character. We're friends now, huh? Well, that's kind of mm. you to say. Thanks. Yeah, man. Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. Just <laughs> Yeah, back then, things were pretty rough. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went down. Mm. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time. The other one gets on there, I believe. I didn't really talk about it. Oh, so here's a bit of a... It's just how it was. Oh, I Roller Ricky's is right here. There it is. It's never it's too late, Roller Ricky. How did you turn things around? I joined a support group. I opened up about my That's problems. That's a good thing. Sharing that burden just took so much weight off. It's gonna Long move these because I found yeah. Roller Disco. Slightly in the I way. I have fun again, cutting loose and making shapes. So Roller Ricky is here, down, so we are down. here. <laughs> so we're quite a ways from him. It's important just to talk. 
talk to somebody. Just in case I need to guide him somewhere. Hey, he's got a puppy. Oh, hello, Max. Oh. Well, he certainly sounds like a good boy. Max is my emotional support dog. Oh, he's a rescue Max. dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. Indeed. He's the best dog a guy could ask for. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's better than me now, a real pro. Max can skate. Wait, do yeah, <laughs> Don't man. put this first they pressure said, on me. And then they I'll try to do whatever I can. <laughs> but Maxie loves the rink, man. <laughs> Oh, Is that another tree, Maxie? Maxie yeah, I'm trees, sorry. Man. I will call myself. You're a great pair. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you two make a great pair. Uh, Maxie appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think mm -hmm. it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Oh, yeah. Sounds like a good thing. Man, all this talk of skating has got me itching for a boogie. I oh, so it says when you game, 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 game. Can I request okay. a song cool. for us? Something sure. I can groove to, you know, something funky. It'll be me uh, and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll break take now. down. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be oh. safe now, okay? Bye, Maxie. Oh, you got it, man. Peace. Well, um. this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. I really needed that call, you know, after everything. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but it is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. Yeah, th mm. that's what I meant. <sighs> you were thinking about Max on skates, weren't you? Well, uh, <laughs> would you look at that? Another caller on the line. What are the odds? Better take it. Welcome back to 189.16, mm -hmm. The Scream. Max on skates, that is amazing. Nash. How are you tonight, Collar? I'm doing okay. Oh, it's Carrie! safe. Carrie! Hey, I I just <laughs> she wanted just to thank you for putting your hands up for celebration. You know, even though we lost Jimmy and sadly, yeah. I don't know. Hey, it's okay. You were so brave earlier. You're safe now. I wanted to ask you why. Why he didn't. Why am I? Why what, Carrie? Why did he spare me? After what he did. I need to have to come in, but do you want me to say, to say Max before I go? Yes, please. I need to know how to say Max. Mm. What is maybe he only wanted to hurt the pranksters. I. Maybe. I need did to know how to say Max. Was making fun of him? Did he uh, always hate these things? Uh, I mean, such a I mean, thank you. If he did. Spoiler. Why wait all these years do it. to I I want to know. I have now? to know. These stupid hazing nights have to stop. Carrie, you, you know? did yes. so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Help is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, Forrest. Uh, could I request a song? Of course, Carrie. What song? Any song by Blast Processor. And Blast Processor. Thank you. This next one goes out to carry there we go. you know what Carrie just said has really got me thinking about what the whistling man left her alone why there must be a reason when it comes to masked whistling killers I don't think a reason is a key part of their process well, it's something to consider. I need to take a break. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. Okay. So could we look around for things? Oh, we could. Do we need to find things now? Can have a walk around. See if there's anything important. I grab a cup of coffee, cup of tea. When Dawn calls, give her a code that makes the alarm go off. Don't give her any other codes, so give only the alarm test activation code. Okay. Alarm test activation codes. Cool, cool. Thank you. Whew. 
I don't think I can grab anything right now. Nothing of importance. I don't necessarily want to go downstairs. So we're stretching our legs. Let's get going, Peggy. Alrighty, oh, so nice. we okay, could run another you. segment or... So the alarm test activation code... Oh, but... Bugger. Resume. Scratch that for us. We have a caller. You're through to 189.16. The Scream. What's your emergency? Alarm test activation oh, okay. code of our equipment. So alive. Okay. Oh, that call with the teens was awful. Those poor kids. Still, I'm... I'm glad the girl didn't get hurt. Thanks for your concern. Uh, are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song for us. You said you were going to play it, but you didn't. Your oh, name was Dawn, have to... right? My Peggy, Dawn. yes. Oh, well remembered. My name is Dawn, and I wanted to ask you again to play my tune, Forrest. We Long don't have- ride home? We don't you have- know, the one that Peggy said you threw outside the window? <sighs> So I think we don't have but it. We don't have it. So, as you mind. just said, if Peggy you want to, uh, I don't window. mind. But Forrest, you do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. I'm really sorry, Don, but we just can't get it right now. Mm -hmm. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? It's miles from the station. It won't take you a second to grab it. She seems suspicious. Uh, try again tomorrow. I guess. Call us back tomorrow when this is all over, Don. I, and I'll gladly play it for you then. No, no, that won't do. Don't worry. I think I can bring you around, Forrest. Peggy, I'm. I'm calling with more than a request. I know oh. something. I think I know who's going to be next. What? Are you serious? Play my song, Forrest. Find out. Oh, so we have to get the tape? Uh, well, folks, here's some music for you while I think things over. Yep. You're gonna love this next track. Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. Peggy, I mean, is she serious about... I don't know, Forrest, but we don't really have a choice, do we? If she's telling the truth. Oh, my stuff. All right, I'll do it. You're a good man, Forrest. I'll slide you the key to the fire door. Fire door. Wait, wait, wait. Our fire door has to be unlocked? Yeah, it, uh, you know, I never thought about it. But, yeah. We should talk to Reggie about that later. Anyway, I'll yeah. hold the fort down while you're out. Maybe I'll even get a caller. That could be exciting. 189.16. Yeah. The screw. With me, Peggy. <laughs> oh, Peggy's funny. Thank you for the key. Battery. Fire door key. Was that this one? I'm not getting in there tonight. Okay. Maybe not the right of it. There's a fire door downstairs. Must have been. Fire escape door. Must have been behind here. Oh! I do not like the thought. Of going outside. I need a key to get in there. I do not like the thought of going outside while there is a killer on the loose. Do I have some sort of weapon? Where did she say she no. threw it? I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man out here in the open. Hello. Oh gosh, okay. Um, I don't know where I'm looking for this record. 
She said she threw it out a window. Out of a window? But that would land in the trash, right? Whatever is unwanted. <laughs> Thank you. I can't get in there. I don't know if I'm like timed in this. If I spend too long out here, I'm gonna get like killed. So I'm quite nervous. I can. Can I unlock these? Don't seem to be able to. Oh. Which window would she have thrown it out of? Um, I don't know. Oh, wait. Long ride home. Here it is. Got it. Wait, why can't I? Here it is. Long ride home. All right, let's get back into the place. Of course. It locks behind me. And of course the key doesn't work on this side. Fantastic. Maybe there's another way back in through the basement. A, a door, elevator, or something. Oh, that's just great. Can't unlock this, it's not highlighting. Are these what these fuses are for? Because I had that fuse box. And that's broken too. Only the best for KFAM. Let's see if I can fix this. Looks like a power issue. I should check yeah. the fuse box. That's why we need to check the fuse box, because there's missing fuses. Okay, there's a one there. So we found two already. Let's look back here. Oh god, this is not fun. I do not want to be out here. I can't tell you later. Sure, thank you. Um Looks like I'm gonna have to hunt around for some new fuses. Let's take all the old ones out. So we found one oh wait. Is that one? Fuse, yeah. Can I not So there's like green and red ones, so we need to find a certain Pattern. Oh, I thought I could read that. It says 77. I did see another one. Over here. So, if we, I think we might have to figure out what sort of fuses we need. Nah, that's not right. Do the fuses add up properly? Huh. 70? Does that mean... Or do they have to add up to 70? Like... Things? Okay, let me... Find some more fuses then. Do I have a flashlight? Be nice to have a flashlight. So I'd have to do like two thirties and two fives. Would that be the trick to this? Mayhem? Am I big braining this? Bingo! There we go, I big brained it. That door is on the Let me Where do I unlock the Oh, I unlocked the basement doors. I could probably survive that fall. Oh, yeah. You might want to shut that. Is there a way to shut it? Oh. Oh, I was going to say, I thought we had hiding spaces. Looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Clive? Oh. <gasps> oh. 
Him walking. What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. Is he the killer? Huh. There's a key. I'll just take that. Might be important. Big brain. So is Clive behind this? Or is someone using Who for thought? He's going through all this stuff. It's a head. Do I make up a mannequin? Do I get something for doing that? I doubt I would. Never mind. <laughs> Keeping it in there. Do I show this to Peggy? Can't open these drawers. I don't want to know if I can take anything. Wait, I can't take it? Okay, well let me take it, but never mind. Oh, okay, so the Janet has been a little... ...sussy. God, you think people would clean up around here? Hmm. I wonder how the show's going. Hopefully pretty good. I can't get through that. I'm saying, what well, the enemy is coming close. Oh, okay, we came out of there. Alright, let's head back up. We're back to the safety of the studio. Hopefully, Peggy's okay. <laughs> Music still popping off. Isn't that such a good song, folks? And now for... Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Something did happen. Clive the janitor might be Clive the murderer. What? Ooh. Start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire game. Oh, so he's telling the penis is beginning? Yes. I won't let it so <laughs> Why did you heave that thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell, and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. Mm -hmm. All right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement, made Correct. by our creepy janitor, who you Correct. think is the creepy whistling man. Correct. Yep. And on the creepy board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Correct. Yep. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's Clive's next target. That's right. And we've got to find them. You said there are four locations listed there too. The hospital, the power station, the gas station, and the trailer park. Hospital power Clive station. must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, mm. you're going to have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. Hit the button if you need any help. Is it Child Park Hospital? Um, Gun Street. Um, I need help, baby. How's it going? I could do uh, it's not going well. I could use some help. Okay, let's review the basics. We yep. need to work out who the next target is. There's four locations, right? And four people. Mm -hmm. We need to figure out if anyone is at any of the four locations tonight. And if they are, we can call them and warn them. There must be some connections between the notes. That makes sense. Great. Need any more help? Ah, oh, the notes, okay. Uh, Tartu Shot Garlic's Creek. And she's shoving at Inverse Garlic's Creek. Like a full doctor. Mr. Doctor. Mr. D. Red. Mr. M. Houston. Mr. Peep Stein. And Mrs. K. Stein. So. Oh, I got an ad. 
Oh, look at Doctor. He will come back and all the love we get a flu shot is that flu season upon us. Mm hmm. So maybe Kim Walker's at the hospital? She's like a doctor. Or is that Keith Walker? Oh no, it must be Kim. Truck. Athlete club. She might be the tr I don't know. Becca. Car club. So she's probably at the gas station. Oh no, she's probably at the trailer park. Um. Aunt Williams. Car club. At least, uh, oh, so they, they might both be at the car club? Rebecca and... What is... Maybe they're both at the same place? Uh, so... Da -da. I'm busy you don't get ads on sharing the circle or something. Oh, I remember this one. I might need a little help with this. <laughs> Hold up the cable first. Just get a few shots. Okay, so I'm guessing. Uh, Kim Walker is the one at the hospital. She's like a doctor or nurse. I'm guessing. Former Gallows High School football captain Chuck suffered a career ending injury as a victim of festivals last, late, la late last year. So, if everyone's ready to recover, we are buying him some lottery tickets. Hopefully, he gets lucky and gets back on his feet. No pun <laughs> intended. Dog is below. Hmm. So, he got into an accident. Chuck did. I was like, it seems, I was like, Sean character Chase Brody. 987, Quiet Ridge. Health and Safety Convention. Hmm. Is your car safe? Sheriff Matthews wants it and stuck out for the switch to pay about more car thieves. So our gas station bought by a local ex lottery winner. Christine's gas repair starts to manage on like 14 years ago, and your claim is it will be keep you busy on the evenings. Has car owner? Hmm. Chapuri. <laughs> local legend takes to Manhattan. Empress, author of a telling book, Diary of a Car Thief, movies. Out the gallows, creek to the knife in the big city. She stole our cars and then she stole our time and money. I said I would be a dream man. He last year made on page 15. 987. Mm. Colonel Keanu, thank you for the gifted. Police have finally put an end to long carbon thieves. 1977. I am not sure what I'm doing with this one. Um, 987 Food Convention. Yeah, let's go to the convention. Are you the answer washer? Chuck. Oh, it is Chuck. The answer is Chuck. So the answer is the Chuck dude.
so he's the one that got into the accident in the festival or car thief galaxy hive is quite rich high hmm. so it's chuck okay I'm good now thanks peggy no problem peach here bye how's it going i'm ready peggy are you sure We've only got one shot at this. I'm sure to just make the match. Uh, I may get on, um, what's the website called? Why can't we buy my own website? I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name first. Who do you think the target is? Chuck Brody? Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? Oh, God, okay. Um, how do I know where to find them? Let me, I need to double check this. I gotta check this, I gotta check this. I guess a gas station. The gas station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. I have to be. I just had to look it up because I was like, I was getting very confused. <laughs> Hello? Chuck Brody! Listen, I know this sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the whistling man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. This is Boris Nash. Listen, the whistling man's back. We found a list with your name on it and... Oh God, it's today. The year I finally let myself forget, I... Forget what? Forget, F forget what? Why'd you tell him to run? Forget. No, no man, I gotta get out of here. Oh. I... I think he ran off. Well, fingers crossed that Chuck... <gasps> Jeez! It sounds like something blew up! He's using bombs now? Oh... I, I... Is Chuck... I don't know. I don't know. Hang on, we're getting a call. Hello? Chuck? Chuck Brody survived the whistling man. <gasps> he survived! The whole goddamn gas station's gone up. Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. I got everyone to follow me out. The town's only ambulance was blown to hell, though. Mm. Yeah. Damn it, that fireball threw me. I've got to get to the hospital. I'm not feeling great. Well, Boris, <laughs> yeah. man, I can't thank you enough, but... Yeah. I gotta go. Wait, I... 
Damn it. We lost him. What was that about today? Survive. Oh, Boris, yes. the call board is lighting up. Get us into some music while I deal with this. Oh, okay. Here's some music while we regroup here on KFAM 189.16, The Stream. So he blew up the gas station. We we did it. So she's just taking some calls. There's got to be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. We or me? You mean me? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Me too. Play a record, Forrest. Uh, just putting one in the thing. Let me just find one. Just something different. Oh God, I'm walking into the door. Right, we gotta go back down to the basement. And find out what more we can do to help these people survive. Get no not in there. Goes through this way. There, I'm gonna go through this way. Through some lockers. All right, what can we find? Hmm. A key. Was this always here? I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. A key. See anything else? Blam blam. <laughs> oh, this key. Found basement storage. Where was basement storage? Mm, let's figure out where that door is. Is this? Whoa. Hey, Forrest. Peggy, give me some warning before yelling down the intercom. Sorry. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. How do I play this? Or do I take it back upstairs? Do I not use it? Do I go back up? Oh no. Oh this is a tape. That that's so bright, dude. George Barlow. 1968. That's when this all began for Wait. George Barrow? We all heard that he drowned after a night out drinking. Was it actually Clive? Has Clive really been the whistling man for that long? He says mm -hmm. I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. I think we need to see what else is hidden down here. Be careful for it. Keep looking. Buzz the intercom if you found something. Uh, okay. I don't know what I'm going to find, though. Time of August. 
autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That puts the time of death. Hmm. I don't feel safe over here. So we've been running for his whole life, like for a long time, because someone was chasing him. We got a book. Oh! These are alarm codes. I remember Keanu saying something about codes. Do anything with this? I'm really worried I'm just gonna get jumped by the whistling man. If you're listening to this, then oh, because it's got something about you. What the? I'm a man who likes to stay informed. I've got subscriptions to newspapers all over the country. Mm hmm. Vinyl for my collection. I didn't kill anyone, mind you, but that's past mattering. Now, I could say that I should say, but my employer made it clear that my family would pay a high price if I ever spoke out. Let's hope so. Let me just check something. Alarm test activation code. Alarm tests. Okay. So the alarm tests. What the hell? Peggy is not going to believe this. So yeah, the second one. So that's the one we need to do. Do I do anything with this? I'm sure we gotta do something with that at a certain point. Right, let's go back to Peggy. And tell her all about what we found. Oh god, this seems like a place where I could just get jumped. But the whistling man is just waiting for me. Right, we've seen that. Why does that look like a hiding spot? I really don't enjoy that. Do I talk to Peggy? No? What have you found, Forrest? It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. Poor George. He was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? Do you think you've met her before? I don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. Found another tape. It talks more about how George died. What did it say? It 
sounds like he was running for his life. Sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? I'm not sure yet. I, um, I think I found Clive's last recording. Mm-hmm. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? I found a confession. Not for any killings, but for playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. You... Do you think the whistling man already got him? Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but... Maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? Hmm. We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Forrest, that's dark. I know, but Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident. And the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to save them. Mm -hmm. Why didn't he just come out with all of this? Uh, he said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? Bye. Did you say Max? We haven't them? yet. I think we're getting oh, to that. We just found like the secrets about Clive. We have the activation code, so it's the second one, right? The one nine. One five. There's gotta be more down here. I need to find all the tapes. You think so? How much did Clive hide down there? The one nine one five one nine. Well, if there are more tapes, then there must be more maps to follow. All right. Okay. That seems to be the case. All right then. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. More tapes? Didn't we see all of them now? Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. Degrees of importance indicate that the subject has been deceased. Okay, we've heard that. I don't know the curse from the top of my head. Oh, was this one? Preliminary toxicology results show no signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found, indicating elevated levels of stress so the, um, activation in the immediate code? moments before death. Hmm. Damn, this is like so creepy, dude. I do not want to be down here. You guys are walking through doors, I'm going to show you back then. Who are the more tapes I can listen to? Been down here. Uh, do I get back to Peggy? Is that everything I found? Might be able to talk to Peggy. I think that's what I missed. Has to be the only one I missed, right? Can't see any more around here that are glowy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the only thing I missed. Hopefully, anyway. Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face, typically obtained by running through foliage. Severe blistering something. to the feet. As yeah. though the deceased had been Okay, we've heard that. Let me run back to Peggy and see what she's got to say. What have you found, Forrest? There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. Do you think you found everything, Forrest? I think there's got to be more down here. I need to find all the tapes. You think so? How much did Clive hide down there? Well, if there are more tapes, then there must be more maps to follow, right? That seems to be the case. All right, then. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Wait. Oh, I can't leave here. Oh, damn it. All right, so even more tapes to find? How can I find things in such a small area? I'll leave that there for now, it's in my face.
Is there like tapes in here or something? Find the delivery note. Maybe we can talk to Peggy about this. Do you think you found everything, Forrest? I think there's got to be more down here. I need to find all the tapes. That seems mm. to be the case. All right then. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. I thought that would be something to discuss, you know. All right, more tapes to find. Even though I think I found all the goddamn tapes. Because you've seen that one, or heard that one even. I feel like just like really hidden or something. Where's they? Gosh. Okay, so you've seen that one, right? Yeah. Is there like a secret one we missed? Wait, this... Additionally, there appears to be a post-mortem injury to the arm. Crouch. They are just hidden in plain sight. Of course. Ah, of course. It is the coroner's opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased, resulting in a fall from a height into a body of water where he hit his head, was knocked out, and dropped. This has to be important. Following that, he was moved. Did we find everything? Let's go back to Peggy. And talk about what we found. I think that has to be everything, right? What have you found, Forrest? I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe mm -hmm. an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit, where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded the doctor, uh, Dr. Sullivan, to stop recording. Dr. Sullivan? Wait, Virginia Sullivan? She was her caller from earlier. Well, then our caller was involved in a conspiracy around this boy's death. We need to call her mm. back once we finish down here. It, it looks like she might know something about what's going on. Yeah. I found a written autopsy report. According to that, it's just like you said at the start. George drowned after getting drunk. Said he liked to fight, too. But that contradicts the tape. I know. And I think I know why. There's a note with a report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia must be our coroner. Wait, the caller from earlier. When we had to call the takeout restaurant, Virginia? Do you think you found everything? I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they Absolutely. hired Clive to make it look that way. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. Hey. Be on the grave and... Uncover Clive's research. Thank yeah, God you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? It's our job. This is our job, Peggy. We gotta do it. Oh, you're right. So, 
What's the plan now? I think we should call Virginia back. All right, I'll get her on the line. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. Lunker, no, it's hey, Forrest. it's the Radio Man, Forrest Nash. Forrest Nash. <laughs> radio Man? What's up? Solving mysteries, saving lives. The huge. Right, 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 right on. Plunker, what are you doing at Virginia's house? The screech. <laughs> she asked if we could stay to keep an eye out for that whistling turd. So we're hanging out, bro. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's big of you, Plunker. Oh, it's nothing. Can I speak to Virginia? Sure thing, Radio Man. I'll just go get her. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm, I'm glad you're still okay. Oh, Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. You've been through a lot. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Virginia. I thought I was. I thought... Easy. We're not calling to talk about earlier. We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Mm. Me? What would I know? Clive? Does the name Clive mean anything to you? Clive? No. I don't know that name. What are you asking about this for? You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified for it. Oh, she did say Clive, Clive didn't she? At our station, and we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We sure think Clive's dead. Dead? We thought so too. We thought so too, but... You don't understand. All those years ago, he... It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he... Well... And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? I... All right. One day, I came into work to find a... a boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in. And he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of course I said no, but, well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. Ooh. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. That's it's expensive not good. to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. Dang, and Clive promised that me that his good. employer would pay for Plus my sister's <laughs> treatment if I did what he said. And that if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. I don't know why nice. he had me do it, but <laughs> my sister needed me. <laughs> you have to understand, she needed me. We understand. It's okay. Thank you. Virginia. That was brave. God, I just want this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. Alrighty. So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. 
Clive threatened her oh, to gee. keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? We could try Sandra. What would Sandra know? I don't know, but we have to start somewhere. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. Is this something that Dolan wanted? Aha! Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? Jazz Pizzazz Hello Jazz Studio. Hello again, Sandra! <laughs> it's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. The Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. My forest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. Oh, okay. That sounds nice. Really? Well, that sounds nice. I might just call you back tomorrow then, too. Oh, uh, you've got my number. What about tonight? Is there anything you want to talk about right that, now? Remember question? why we called, Forrest. <laughs> of course. Do you know why the whistling man might have targeted you? Ha! <laughs> like yeah, let's see what she got to say. Knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He'd have chased after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. Specific. People who know about the death of a boy named George. I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Oh. Are you keeping secrets? Don't play again. Hmm. Have you had to keep quiet about anything? Any secrets you've had to keep? What would I have to keep quiet about? I don't know. I mean, could be that you've seen something or heard something. I never saw anything. And even if I did, what would that matter? And it was years mm, ago. She seems, uh. She seems a bit sketchy. Sandra, are you okay? It was years ago. We know, spit it out. We know, Sandra. You do? You know about? Uh, yes. Of course. <sighs> this studio is my life. After I found the body in the river. Ooh, she found studio. Dota's body? Is that true? Sure. Sure. I understand. When the rent just kept going up, he said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet. And everything would be okay. Of course. Of yep. course. We understand. We gotta keep it I mean, low and calm with her. Like I killed him. What was the harm in saying I found him in the reservoir instead of the river? Right? Right? Mm. I'm sorry. I can't do this. And she's gone. I don't think that could have gone any better. You truly did great, Forrest. Well, okay, folks, thank you. if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. Oh. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Forrest. I know this is real. Oh, is this Forrest's pizza again? <laughs> But I wondered if you could send this special birthday message to my uncle. Ponty's pizza? Uh, sure, why not? <laughs> you know what? I'd welcome a change of pace. I'd be glad to. Thank you, Boris. He's my uncle Ronnie. His first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. Got, got but it. since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, do you believe it? <laughs> Folks, always She's got to talking pizza. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you'd like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my God, damn it! You son of a bitch! Stop calling. <laughs> Sorry, Forrest. Let's just move on. We've already got another caller on the line. This is 189.16, <laughs> The Scream. Pepperoni! You're on the air, caller. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> oh, hello. Who's this? Sounds like someone's caller. laughing. Sounds like you're trying to giggle. <sighs> P 
Ponty. Ponty's pizza always delivers. Come rain or sleet or whistling man, <laughs> we'll be there. <laughs> Go away, Ponty's pizza. <laughs> Forest? Forest? Are you okay? <sighs> <sighs> Forest? It's not okay. I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, oh. Forest. Sorry, sorry. That was that was too much. It's okay. It's been a high stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. Hey you guys, you call yeah. whenever you're ready. Folks, don't spend your money <laughs> at Pawnee's Pizza. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Mm-hmm. Moving along. I'd like Moving to move along another caller to 189.16 The Scream. With me, Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Was this done? Don? We played your song, Long Ride Home. Did you hear it? Can you tell us? Uh never mind that now. Forrest, I'm calling mm. because I need your help. Are you in danger? Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. You? Ooh. I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Helping? Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. After Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. I came mm -hmm. back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. Ooh. I need you to help me get inside. Uh, you got a key? Don't you have a key to get in? Only for the apartment door. The front gate requires an entry code. The future is electronic, I guess. Starling 4000, user manual. Yeah. These codes should come in handy. I need that code to get inside. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the new Woodside apartment building between Town Hall and the trailer park. But I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. <laughs> Shit. Neighbor's dog? Is that a neighbor's dog? Yes, it is. Boy, I wish he'd muscle that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. Oh, so is he? Is she like here somewhere? Alarm activation. So you need the second one? Ooh, what's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. Starling, huh? Starling Security 4000, huh? That's right. Very newly installed. I need the key code before the whistling man gets me. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you for it. Is it deactivation code to me, County? Oh, activation post. Call me back soon. All right, folks. Here's a little tune for you all to well, the, enjoy. Well, is it the deactivation code or into her apartment? This one. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me or was there something? Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah. Activation. Well, tell you what, okay. we have a Starling 4000. So the second one here at KFAM. Second Clive one. I bought one for the station. I have to do the second Maybe one. Maybe we can find something to help. Yeah, I'm not oh sure. Oh god, no. Okay. But I'm not doing someone. that. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. Mm-hmm. I have to give... Wow. 
Search for info, sorry, search on board. And the Woodside Apartments. So I have to go back to Max's thing. Oh no, not Max. <laughs> Calling Clive Max now. Um, let's have a look then. Go ahead of the game. What my boys? Oh, oh! So I don't need to be here. Ah, okay. So I can just yeah. Yeah, okay, right. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? Nothing, except the manual. All right. Well, I'll get Dom back on the line then, Forrest. I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Peggy. When you're ready, shut the music off. Line one, mm -hmm. whenever you're ready. Yep. Done. Already here. Already there. This is Forrest Nash from 189.16. No, right yeah. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? Give alarm test activation. I hope this is right. The code is 191519. Thank you, Forrest. Why does she sound suspicious? Son of a bitch! Ah! Is she? What? Why is she so suspicious? Is she shooting? Inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him. That was the whistling man. The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle. I don't like hurting folk, but I can't let anything happen to Maxie. He's my best friend, you know? I. Listen, man, I'm heading back inside. I'm gonna barricade that window. My man, thank you. You and Peggy can skate for free whenever you want, forever. That's a done deal. Free skating. Thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. You got it. Talk Let's to go roller skating oh. again sometime. Okay. Gallows Creek. Here's the fire the whistling man. And Max did. Just happened. Alrighty. So, why does it seem like Dawn's in on the whistling man shit? Like, why does it seem like that? Let's just put a sign on the flow. So, the whistling man is a woman? That was just... No, I can't I believe it. I, I can't believe it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. There must be someone helping her. There's gotta be other people. I thought she was just regular Gallows Creek Strange. Really, Forrest? Why do you think she requested that song? Uh, to mess with us? To mess with us? Yeah, maybe. So, what now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Right. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. <laughs> we now believe the killer is actually a woman. <laughs> one who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. 
in here. There's another entrance here. Ah, oh, it's sad to say, but it's time to trust no one. My neighbors look out for each other and stay safe. What do I say? <sighs> We tried to trust the dawn. We're say neighbors. It. Look out for each other and stay safe. The killer was calling themselves Dawn. Don't just say anyone calling themselves Dawn. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. And boom! You folks have my new number, They're right? They're saying they're whistling it's men. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed Maybe? some light on I don't know. I have a feeling that something hey, weird's we going on, like someone's in. helping. Okay, folks, time to take a call. This is Forrest Nash, and you're li- Please help me! My name is Casey Moore. Casey, I'm hi. I'm 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's, he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Uh... Is he still breathing? Is he still breathing? Take a breath. Uh, okay. We went out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling all of a sudden. I just started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that. And I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh no. Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like he might have known the person. Now I'm both James. Welcome in with folks. <laughs> Was it a whistling man? Casey, was, it whistling was his man? attacker the whistling man? The who? They had a mask and wore all black? That's all I know. That's Please, whistling man. we need help here. I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. Uh, where is he hurt? Can you tell us where your friend was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach mm. and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground and it's... Oh, the knife is still there in his leg! Don't What's pull your friend's out. name, Casey? The worst Jason, thing to do is pull Jason out a thing because it's holding in the blood. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Don't pull the knife out. Hello, St. Gabriel's leg. Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. Yep. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the yeah, ambulance is... Well, you know. I know, but please, we need something or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him, and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to need buy to him find time to get him. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave oh, the rest of like you. Oh, there's all the onions. handle that? We don't have much choice. We don't really have much choice. Hit me. Okay, from the top. Okay. He's bleeding out. Bam. Then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Get him Lay comfortable. Him down. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. Apply pressure. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Clean cloth get and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply... Pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. Don't take it out. It's stopping the worst. That's what I said. Right now. 
If anything, you should it's secure taking it like a, if wins. you were impaled with I like a knife or something, the worst thing to do is it makes just sense, to take though. it out. Otherwise, God, you're just gonna bleed it out more. Info. But I think we can handle this. Glad you've got it so far, because there's more to go. <sighs> Keep going. I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. May enter shock. does, act fast. Okay. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Do not remove it. Just apply another on top of it. Another one's up. If it's safe, <laughs> elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital okay. organs. Elevate the leg. Try to keep him warm. Try to keep him warm. Rest <laughs> and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> stay calm. All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Got it. Don't replace legs. bandages. Elevate keep legs. Keep warm. Keep warm and calm. calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. All right. We got this dude. Stop bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. All right. Good luck. All right, Forrest. Whew. Casey's still on line one. All right. Hello? Hello? Forrest, are you there? Uh, how you holding up? Hi, Casey. I'm here. Yeah. How are you doing? I need help! I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What you about do the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell. Should I pull it out? No. Don't touch the no, knife. No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. No, yeah. don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Yeah, we will. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Yeah, yeah. It's it's proper sudden. <laughs> His stomach is worse, though. Uh. You say we need to get a secure knife or leave the knife alone? Leave the knife alone. All right. I I think we need to leave that knife alone. All right. I'll just keep putting pressure on his stomach for now. Forrest, can I have a word? Okay. Casey. I'm gonna have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. No, oh, is wait. that wrong? Jason, please be okay. Was that wrong? Oh. <laughs> wait, can I go back? Can I go back? I really hope. Can I have a word? Oh no! Damn it! You saved there. Damn it! Casey, I'm gonna have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on, and let us know when the Damn bleeding it. is under control. I. You're doing great. We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything, and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. Damn it, I made a mistake. Oh, wait. Jason, please be okay. <sighs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm so bad. I'm so bad. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? <sighs> You're right. Might not be She's the end. probably on her way to her next target right now. I mean, we exactly. didn't take it out. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Uh, any suggestions? Any suggestions, Peggy? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a... Producer getaway. Producer getaway. Uh, never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah. Yes. Why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. 
Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. What? What now? Oh. Go on. Go on. It's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. I'm not gonna like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? Floppy? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy um... disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. Oh, you like put a, them in a computer yeah. and they do something. Peggy, I know it's a guy named Jack or John or anyway, Jason. I think it's something Reggie with Jason. Reggie decided that the future is floppy, yeah. and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. I just have to look around. Good. Okay, look around. I'll for... patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. Okay. So, Reggie's office. That's not opening. Unlock all doors to the station. Where was Reggie's office again? You might, I guess we'll find it. Down here somewhere. Wasn't there a locked door? Somewhere that I can get into down here? Private. Oh, this must be it. Aha! Looks like I need a four digit code. Yeah, right. So he said he writes down. Nope. Oh. Very important date. Okay, so it's a very important date. Oh, Reginald Scott. First date. Reginald Scott. Okay, very important date. What was he very important doing? Tiano, welcome in. Is it Reginald? But I don't want to do that. Um. Hey Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you oh. find what we need? I can't figure out how to get into this stupid safe. No worries, we still have a little time. Reggie writes almost. I've written this up in my post-it notes. I recommend you start reading. I'll have a look around. You're probably right. I'll let Actually, you know when I find something. Actually, it's weeks now overdue. Don't. Could this be it? Oh god. Oh. Taste of Mexico. 20th of July 86. So, 2006 or something like that. Let me try. Then. <laughs> I don't know if that was a very important date. That's the only thing that has a date on it, but let me try... I did not mean to throw that. I can't get these controls. Right. So, let me try... 2006? Right, didn't I try 2006? Let me try... 0686. That's not working. Must be something else. Mm hmm. Your pizza did be killing feels with a pizza cutter. Oh, 11 of 7. Oh, God. I saw that. Oh. 
Nice. Hey. Oh, damn. Carter. Well, you said it was someone named John, right? We have a Peggy. Nash. Of course, Nash. Oh, there's a John. Okay, you said it was someone named Jay. Karen. Barbara. You said it was a John, right? Same with a J. Can I stick that in? How can I stick that in? Oh, do I need to eject that first? These things are weird. Trying to refuse to engage with first aid training during the course and it was all medical aids. A bunch of medical equipment is on procedure with the military units. So that's not legal. Should I contact Peggy? Hey Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I got the safe open, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be looking for in these files. We need to know who can do first aid, and we need them to be close to Nancy Drive. Anything further away than a street or two is probably too far. Anyone who ticks those two boxes is our best bet. Got it. I'll take another nice. look at the files. I'll let you know when I find something, or don't. Does this all say, like... What does she say? Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I think I, I, think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. Oh, Casey. Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to give him a rest, but he just threw up everywhere. What's happening? What's he there? Uh. Oh, uh. He's. He's going into God, shock. It sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? 14 Nancy Drive. He lives in Nancy Drive. Elevate Jason's... L oh. Elevate Jason... Mm. Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. Jason, stay with me. I'm just gonna move you. This might hurt. Okay. I propped his legs up on some boxes. I got it. I got it. Looking at my notes. We need to get Jason as warm and comfortable as possible. Do you have anything you could use nearby, Casey? Yeah. Jason, you okay? Jason? He's gonna be fine. Jason is going to be fine. He's got to sure be fine. He knows he's gonna be okay. Okay. Well, you said you knew who to call earlier. Who was it? 
Call John Hedges. We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Yeah, and according Come to Come on, we got notes, this. We can save Jason. <laughs> John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, 5420735. Calling now. Let's hope he picks... Uh, who the hell is this calling me? What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. This someone's been stabbed. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man. Or, never mind. He's lost a lot of blood and he's passed out. We need you to help him. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. Not a man is gonna well. die if we don't help him right it's now. Not, sorry. <laughs> I haven't been oh. on for over ten years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach, and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies, and I'll head right over. Oh, I hope we can save him. Guys on my watch. Thank you, John. Go on, we'll let him know you're go on, John. Way. You're a hero. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak, and then just started thrashing. How are you doing? What now? about now? Is he still thrashing? Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming. You're gonna be just fine. Just hold on for me, okay? Just hold on. Come on. Hello, Casey. This is John Hedges. I'm here about Jason. Yes. Please let me in. That's our colleague. I'm guessing that's Jason there. Casey, I'm gonna need your help. Forrest, Peggy, don't you two worry. We've got this from here. Okay. Forrest, we'll call you back later. I have to go now. Good luck, everyone. Whew. God, I hope he's going to be all right. And with that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Okay. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. All right. Oh, fingers crossed we saved him. I just hope that one mistake didn't fudge us up too much. All right, let's get back in and do our jobs. Now it's time to go with the flow. And this is their hit, crying for help. It's getting pretty Why is that ironic for this the might be your last situation? Break so try to enjoy it. Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. Alright. Let's just hit Let's back up. Roll. You got it. You got John. We've got another call fine. coming through too. When you're ready, shut the music off. Welcome back to 189.16, the scream. the scream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Forrest, it's me, Roller Ricky. Oh, oh hey, hey Roller Ricky. Ricky. Good to hear from you, yeah. Good to hear you again. How are you both doing? Oh, we're good, man, thanks to you. You're like our guardian angel. Hell yeah. That wouldn't be a bad look for you, Forrest. A little white wing halo number. <laughs> Maybe something for the KFAM Halloween party. All right, everyone, let's calm down. Ricky, I'm just glad we could help you and Maxie. Oh, Is gosh, there anything else guys. we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Ooh. Oh, really? Oh, what's that? You see, man, uh, me 
me and Jason know each other? You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. That Runner Ricky, they called me. All right, and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team too. Ooh, tell me about tell him. Tell me about him. What was George like? I didn't know him for long, man. Sad to say. We had our first team party on the night he drowned. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky, were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I beat feet out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love, man. I can whole see lot of it, love. What was her name? Ricky, was it Dawn? Please. What was her name? I never got her name, man. He just called her Bean. Bean. I didn't really know her before or see her after that. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were just having a good time. Having a good time as usual. The next thing I knew, everyone was running for their life. I looked up and saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees. And in the trees? And I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home. Didn't know about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. No. And it wasn't your fault. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't not your You're fault, not a dude. Bad person. I know that now, ma'am. It took a long time to learn, but yeah, just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got it, man. Anyway, I think it's time for me and Maxie to free up your phone lines. Thanks for listening, man. I'll let you to it. Oh. Thank you. Night, Ricky. Bye, Max. <laughs> All right, folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, She's probably in her mid to late 30s now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in. But hang on. What's up, Peggy? Peggy? Oh. Peggy? You're going to want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks. It's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Ah, I hope this is good news, Peggy. I'll talk to my dog. Hey, Who nice. forgot? Find out for yourself on line one. Hello? Forrest, I'm glad I got back through to you. Leslie! Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? Surprise! It's Leslie, our 911 operator, leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? We're doing okay. Sarah and I are both happy to be headed back home. We're happy to have you too. I... Wait, Sarah? Oh, yeah, I mean Deputy Martinez. <laughs> anyway, we got back into radio range a little while ago. We've been listening in, but haven't been able to get through until now. The hub is on the way. It's been non-stop since you left. Please tell us you're bringing help. You bet. Hell yeah. I'm leading a whole goddamn squad towards Gallows Creek as we speak. Yes, Leslie, let's, let's go. Line. They had uh, no idea of course what they did. Happened. That's great news. That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing Most likely. So. I don't know how he, how she, how the whistling man Sarah did Martinez? It. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot, but we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. What do you need? You can count on us. 
What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in, so once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. Okay, uh, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I know. Oh, you know. I have watched the last few times. headlines now. Oh, really? Morris Nash's interview of a lifetime. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. Oh yeah. Take care. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. The sooner this is over, the better. I am right. Trust me. Anyway, we should get you back on air. Taking callers is the only way to see this through. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Bringing you back live now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say things are looking up. Fingers it's crossed. almost over. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, this Forrest. is uh, John. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John, is is he gonna be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. Yes. He's got stabilized and resting in a bed. Whew. We're preparing to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much. Have you have been there then? God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? Jason! Jason, we meet at last. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to take the edge off. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> Take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. Yeah. Well, but, uh, we saved Jason. That, I, I needed to call you. What did you need to tell us about? The whistling man is still out there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. As far as we know, anyway. Well, I was worried you'd say that. God damn it. Actually, I'm glad you called. I wanted to talk to you about what happened earlier. Yeah. Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he alright? He is now. I mean, he was attacked earlier, but this call came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You plan on finishing? Yeah. You feel what happened? I'll be right back. I don't back. think I've got too much longer. Sure. I know it's only like a five to Sorry, so Jason, long where was I? Ah, game. Yep. And Ricky's I played a couple hours the other day. don't need to worry about him. So, That's a relief. Yeah. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. Oh god. My face is coming off. Hold it all in. Sounds mind. like you've been back holding back about day. something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. Oh. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. And then the town just I don't moved think it's on. Yeah. I don't think, I don't know this game is like overly long. What happened? What happened that night? I went along with the stupid prank, that's what. Whistling night. Um, Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. Mm -hmm. Decided to plan a party in the woods and have the whistling man crash it. It was stupid. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. The party that night, I left the group for a second, met our whistling man. 
pretended to get stabbed in front of his family. That's right. I just probably haven't got too much longer then. How much? Playtime for the memories. That's fair. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? So about now, I'd say. Or just under. Playing dead. But when I heard her scream, Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean. Oh yeah. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was. What? What happened? Are we still on air? No. No, we're not. How do we get it back on? I don't, uh, oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Reggie picked it up a while ago, in case we ever need Are you serious? We're broadcast. just about to get juicy An information. emergency broadcast? Emergency? You know, nuclear war, alien attack? How we going? Yeah. Serial killers location to the top, so we can end this nightmare? Fair point! It's in the storage area, in the far back corner, up on the wall. But he appears what? Alright, big red button in the storage area. Alright, uh, hope I don't die. Oh no, our power's been cut. Someone, they were listening in. They knew we were about to expose them. So, in the basement. It's not the basement. Storage area for corner. Oh god, I'm actually really nervous. You see, is see, is, is... Is the whistling woman, the whistling man gonna be in here? Do I need to hide? She said it was a big button. Oh, I don't need to go there, okay. Big button. No, I don't need to go in there. Storage room, big button. Blue flower, red thorns. Blue flower, red thorns. Storage room, big button. Uh, no, it's true here, wasn't it? <sighs> Far back corner. Why is this station so big? Me casually playing on my well. This is the background. <laughs> oh, why do we hear footsteps though? I'm sure I did. I'm. I'm pretty sure I did see like a. There it is. Is this it? That must be it. Boom! We've got power! The whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. Um. I need to take a shower, but there's a player. Take, keep the overtakes on you. I need to take a shower, but there's a parting tip. Keep them taking you as long as you can. And look at the card on the desk. You can do it. Okay, I'll keep that in mind, Kiara. Peggy, are you there? Are you... Peggy! I need to get back upstairs. Trust this. So I need to take a show, but there's a parting tip. Keep them talking as long as you can and look at the card on the desk. Card on the desk? On my desk? Oh, okay. I'll, I'll take that as a little hint. Uh -huh. Well, what the hell was that?
Okay, I need to keep them talking for as long as possible. Peggy's room door. What? Why is it locked? Oh no. Peggy! Where'd you go? Oh, dude! No way. This can't be happening. It's the whistling dude. This is how you control everything. Do I sit on her desk? Oh, it's saving. A call. Oh. What do you want? What do you want? Good to talk to you again, Forrest. It's Dawn. You know, I've really enjoyed our chats tonight. I guess Wait, is this Dawn? Moments. Is this her? My favorite was when Ricky ran you out of the rink. Ha. Huh. No, you sure pe Oh, Peggy's desk. Where's Peggy? Oh. Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the it's night. Sis. Almost the end of the show. Is Peggy your sister? It's not over just yet. We've got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. Mm, what do you mean? What do you mean? Make the most of it how? Well... Huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Oh, let me take Wait. that out of your mouth and... You crazy bitch! Let me go! Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. What? So who's this? Oh, she's somewhere else. Who? Wait. Who the freaks this? Where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here. I with knew it. There was and two people. That is. Well, he knows I'll get it. Uh, then who's here? Wait, then who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallant's Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Her son? Your son? You mean you... Wait, the, the he? Yes, Forrest. He and I had a son. So there were two whistling men tonight. Of course. Oh, that explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. Hang on. Did you say Barrow? That... Are you... Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. Mm. I wonder if Mooney went crazy wearing this. There we go. Marie? Marie Campbell? George's oh. old girl. Oh. Well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. She comes, give him a slap. Not Don, huh? Marie Campbell. So, not Don, huh? No. Not Don. What are you going to. Oh, another slap. Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 years ago. Listen to me. You. Ah. You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. Uh. Why should I? Why should I help you? Why, why should I play any part in this? Because I think you believe in justice. You think I this mean, it, is justice? I guess I do, but I don't I think this is the way to do no it. Idea, Forrest. These people, these people you've been trying to save, they were all in on it. Yeah, they... they all knew George was murdered, but... Murdered? Uh, listen, I... Oh, oh. Slapping him. Oh. Oh. Punching him, but I, I was... said you speak when you're spoken to. <sighs> now, I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago, and that's why I want you to interview us. You got out of this happen? Are you serious? Are you serious? You, 
You want me to interview you? Am I serious? After everything tonight, you really have to ask me if I'm serious. Uh... Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. I don't trust that. I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, and if I can find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just uh, talk me through what happened that okay, night. Okay, we need to try and. How did it start? How would I know? Yeah. It was 20 years ago. Uh, be honest, Teddy. Teddy, be honest with me, or we're both going to die. Honest, Forrest, I'm trapped here with a psycho. <coughs> what the hell? God damn it. Okay. I'm trying to drag this dialogue out. Coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. Right. Tell me why that what night. Made that night special. That was the night Mooney went missing. We couldn't pass it up. I, I was know. just surprised no one had ever thought to do it before. Wait. You mean this was the first whistling night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God, who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky, he was there too, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah, he was. Ricky Brother was Ricky too. was there. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know. Because I'm a decent man. Is that so? Well. Yes, it is. He I mean, if she could say that. One day, some people do. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life. So, mm. I helped him keep himself together. You. Mm hmm You were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked at the trees and saw Jason there. Bloody, like, he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man. <laughs> Screaming. George and I... Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. Oh. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. Uh. Did you ask Ricky? Did you ask Ricky if he knew or not? I didn't see any reason to. Why? Because Ricky phoned up earlier. He didn't know anything about it, Marie. What? He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. Oh, so he if never we told, told him, him anything. He would have given everything away. But he, well, interesting. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. Just a prank? How can you still say it was just a prank? Oh, come on! I. Oh, oh God! Nice hit. I think he deserves that one. George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding. And got him professional help just in time oh. well, shame he didn't have the good sense to die earlier he's gonna regret that enough about him me and George took off running but somehow we got separated in the woods I ended up near the bottom of a whistling point and when I noticed George wasn't with me I panicked oh. and then 
whistling man grabs me. Ice cream. And he starts laughing. Telling me it's, it's just a joke. I can stall for time here. What happened next? Tell me. What happened next? I suddenly recognized it was Chuck. Chuck Brody? Chuck Brody. It was the whistling man. What? What was he looking at? <laughs> she sounds like she just wanted Seven. revenge and justice for what yeah, happened to her. Next. Nothing. I mean, it was just Teddy. George fell off whistling point. Why'd he fall? Where were you? Where were you when it happened? I. Uh, Did he do it? Joke to pull, though. He would have realized. Ugh. You bitch. No one's going to believe this. After all you did. Then why the cover-up? She's lying. Why the cover-up? My future was at stake. You're the, oh, of course, your you future is at stake. Like. Do people like things. you? Oh, you scumbag. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, Forrest. And then governor. And then... You do not deserve oh. that. What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But mm -hmm. it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke. Gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Oh. Why? Oh, of course, you only cared about your ego. He wasn't a blip. He wasn't a blip, Marie. His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night, but... Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something wow. about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp Creek. Answer the question. I'd answer the question if I were you, Teddy. Yeah. Yes, okay. We own the most of the town. That's it then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. Of course. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. And... Fake report? I only heard the tapes. You'd be disgusted by it. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even... Even yeah. still, she should have told the truth. I, I mean, not. true. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the neighbor, but no. Howard killed the story. But Maurice Russell is dead now. When will the killing end? When will the killing end, Marie? End? When does it end? You can't kill the world. This has to stop sometime. Exactly. It has to. It never should have. <laughs> exactly, I mean. 
to a stop. At least for now. Here, where George and I first met. Before he joined your football team. Where did you first meet? Well, right after he shot the winning throw. Wait a sec. Oh, where? Where did they first meet? Football field? You're at the football field. Jesus Christ! Forrest, you idiot! We're in the gym oh. at Gallows Creek High! Well, I didn't Don't know that. not to do that. Wait! <gasps> Oh, but dead too now, isn't he? He is. Anyway, I think that about wraps up the interview. Oh, did I make a mistake? So, Marie, where? Oh Peggy. Teddy. Peggy, it's been so long since I've seen your face. I worried you wouldn't come. I was thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Sister? 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 Peggy, wh what's happening? Why are you even there? Want to explain, Peggy? Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. You remember? Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. How didn't you recognize your sister's voice unless you like put an accident or something? And when you walked in, you found out that my sister is the whistling man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you you'd try to stop me or oh, So this is what this card is for on the radio. And I just... Should've said. You should've said something. You should have told me. I know, okay? I should have. But I didn't imagine this situation then, so just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night. But did they care? Next best thing? Next best thing? Do you mean... Someone has to pay for what they did. Murray, please. Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. The... Take the card. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. No, she didn't. You forgot. Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep I didn't save Teddy. Shot. No, she I didn't save Teddy. From you. She, she kept it here on her desk. What card? The card you made me my eighth birthday. What does it say then? You're great and eight. Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, M. I didn't say Teddy. I didn't realize where they were. Well, I... But. <sighs> But to be honest, here. I feel Police like right he deserved to die. Teddy deserves to die. It's over, Forrest. <sighs> That's the best thing I've heard. Well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. 
This is Ben. Forrest Nash. Uh, it's better scream. And it's been a scream. Hey. First nest survived the whistling man. The end. Reached the end of the whistling man. Oh, okay, so I actually recovered my feet. I feel like he deserved to die. I killed you, dude, next to me. I killed him. I mean, I didn't do too bad considering. I could never. <laughs> I know I'd be finding so much if that actually happened to me if I was like working like that. But yay, we did it! Thank you guys for joining. I'm glad we played this. This is pretty fun. This was pretty fun. I mean, I gotta say, saving more than half the players. That music so loud. Mm. But yeah, thank you all so much for joining today's stream. But we are going to get out of here. You did pretty okay. Yeah, I'm going to say I saved more than half of the characters that were on there. But I think I did pretty good. <laughs> Not on all swap. Yeah, that was amazing. Thank you. But guys, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you all so much for joining. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.